Warm welcome to all who decided to spend next hour with us. This is the first one in the series of Alfa Laval webinars organized for brewery customers from Poland, Baltic <coughs> states, Ukraine and Romania, which will provide you with the information on the processes and applications related to our products. Today, our guest speakers, Denis Martin and Yarin Grado from Alfa Laval uh, Central Organization Denmark will walk through details of the dry hopping with use of Alfa Laval solutions. After presentation, we invite you to Q&A session. We encourage you to type your questions in the chat box during webinar. Now, uh, considering value of each minute, let me already hand over to our first guest, Mr. Denis Martin. The floor is yours. Thank you, Maishek. Um, so my name is Denis Martin. I'm the regional sales manager uh, in brewery system teams uh, sitting in Alfa Laval, Copenhagen. And um, some of my regions are uh, the Baltic countries, Ukraine and uh, Poland. So uh, today I will present you one of the two Alpha Level solutions we have for dry hopping, and this is the the IMXD we call it. So, um, before going directly into the product and the details of the product, um, let's have a quick look at what is dry hopping. So, dry hopping is basically the the addition of um, hops into into the beer at the later stage so hops are usually added at the end of the at the end of the fermentation when we dry, do dry hopping um, but it can also be done at the start or during fermentation um, and the goal of this later hop addition is to get the fine and volatile essential oils from the hops to add that particular aroma profile to the beer and those those uh, usual usually those essential oils are are lost when, when you add them in the brew house. So one of the most uh, known dry hop beer styles are, are the IPAs, right? You have Session IPAs, New England IPAs, etc. Um, so on the picture here, you can see a very old way to dry hop. It's basically hop flowers in a bag, and then you would put the whole bag in a maturation vessel, wait for a few days for the extraction process to happen, and then once you would reach your aroma profile, you would empty your tank. The, hop, the hops would stay, would stay uh, in the bag. But there was quite a few disadvantages to that. And then furthermore, the breweries have now moved to other hop products. So most of the breweries, when they do dry hopping, they're using hop pellets. Um, but that's also coming with a few disadvantages. Of course... There is the advantage that they are very compressed, they are dry, they are powdered, they are easy to handle, um, but they are also very dry. The hop pellets contain around 90 and 98% dry solid content. Um, so they will bring a better yield and it will be easier to, to use them in the brewery. But there will be also a few challenges coming up and we will have a look at those few challenges. So for example, the first thing that is related to their very high dry solid content is that as soon as they are in contact with the liquid, they will start soaking up a lot of this liquid. So we did a very basic test here. You can see on the left side of the, the slide um, that we put hop pellets in, in uh, some bags and we let them uh, sit in water. And then a few hours later, you can see that those bags on the right have actually... Uh, Got, got actually bigger, right? So, so all the hop pellets started expanding in that bag. So first, there is a lot of beer that went into those pellets. And then second, there is an expansion. And if we now open those bags and see how the pellets are, are looking like, you can see that it, it's not fully disaggregated either. The pellets are actually quite dry still. If you if you think that they have been actually soaking in a, in a liquid and we open them now, it's it's very it's very dry. You can also imagine that the 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 extraction process of those oils is very poor as well, since all the hop pellets that are in the center of that bag have a very low uh, availability, uh, a, a very a very low contact with the beer. 
they're in contact with. That's one problem with the expansion of the pellets. Now imagine that you don't use a bag and then you put your hops directly in the tank. Um, if you're not careful and you put your hop pellets uh, in your system, in your tank, through a line, for example, and you forget to flush your line correctly, if some pellets are um, staying in the, in the line, they will expand as well. But if the volume is not large enough for those pellets to expand, they will form some sort of very hard paste and it looks almost like a green concrete. If the line is long enough, it's almost impossible to, to get rid of those hops into that line. And most probably you will actually have to almost cut and replace your line um, in order to get rid of the issue. That those are the problems and the risk related to the expansion of those hop pellets. Now there is another issue is the behavior of those hop particles once they have been disaggregated in the beer. So in the brewing industry, we're very used to uh, particles that are sedimenting, right? We, we are used to yeast, we know how to sediment them, we know how to treat the bottom of a tank cone. Now with hop pellets, it's actually not guaranteed that all the hops will sediment like yeast. Some of the hop particles will sediment and some of the hop particles will actually float. You can see that uh, on the right picture here, we have just disaggregated some hop pellets in a, in a small volume. And some of the pellets will float to the surface. And this is again, difficult to predict. We have seen that actually some hop varieties will all sediment, some hop varieties will mostly float, and some other ones, of course, will be in the middle. Some will sediment, some will float. So if we go at the larger scale in a, in a bigger brewery, let's say in this case, for example, a customer before installing an IMXD was putting all their pellets loose in their tank, they would purge the first amount of pellets out of uh, the cone directly to the drain, they would um, process the beer afterwards. On the left side here, uh, the first picture on the left side, you have the beer that is very clear, right? So you, you can see that it's very easy to process. We send the beer to the separator, we have purged the, the first hops. Um, there is no problem for the separator to, to treat that beer. And then the, the, the beer is further sent to the, the cross flow filter in that case, or the filter in this case. Sir. Um, near the end of the filtration, when there is only a few percent left in the tank, you can see that the part of the hop pellets that normally float are being sent to the separator. But this means a huge variations in terms of uh, solid concentration for the separator. And any separator will have a very hard time to deal with such a variation drastic variation in solid content coming on its inlet. And then unfortunately for that customer, it was impossible to predict, let's say accurately, when those floating hop pellets would come. And on top of that, when it happens, it's very difficult to deal with the issue. So usually what would happen is that the hops would go through the separator all of a sudden. The PID regulation is not fi fast enough to, to handle that solid content. And then you would have some hops, hops that would actually still go through the separator. Those hops that go through the separator can then lead to other process issues, such as, for example, clogging uh, the inlet of a plated exchanger. Uh, it can also happen to have uh, hop particles uh, ending in the, in the beer filter. In order to, to address those, those process issues, we have, we've been working on, on the INXD. And here is is a quick presentation of the IMXD system. On the left, you can see an IMXD that is being installed in a maturation or fermentation tank. IMXD stands for Isomix External Drive. So if you are already familiar with Isomix, it's basically a modified Isomix system that will allow the repumping of much larger particles. We are able to actually handle whole hop pellets through uh, our IMXD. So it is to be installed in a tank where the fermentation or maturation will occur and we will require a recirculation loop. So we install a recirculation loop dedicated for that tank. And then once the, hop are, the hops are introduced into the tank, we start a recirculation, which will basically guarantee the homogenization and the correct uh, disaggregation of the hop pellets into the beer. If you had to install several of these IMXDs 
into your cellar, you would then have to put uh, an AMXD in each of the tanks, but then you could use, for example, one common line to introduce the hot pellets. The AMXD is also agnost agnostic to the way you actually bring the hops into the, the tank. So you can bring them all directly to the tank by pneumatic transport, but you can also uh, bring them through um, a maceration tank that we call. So that is what we would recommend usually. So we would have a dedicated tank where we disaggregate the hop pellets um, in a concentrated way, you can say, 10% solid content. And then we would pump that hop slurry to the tank to be dry hopped. And then after the transfer has been done, we recirculate internally into the tank. Now, as soon as we talk about um, moving the beer together with the hop pellets, let's say as soon as there is a movement in, in the tank or uh, between the hops, you can say, and, and the beer, we talk about dynamic dry hopping uh, compared to static dry hopping, which is basically the very traditional method of dry hopping where you would just put the hops into the tank and wait um, for, for the extraction process to happen. There is very little difference between um, dynamic dry hopping and static dry, dry hopping when it comes to aroma profile. Here you can see on the left the difference in different aromas between dynamic and, dynamic, uh, dynamic and traditional dry hopping. But there are also a lot of advantages. The advantage, of course, is the yield we will have normally a better yield compared to at least dry hopping in bags. As we saw earlier, there is much more um, surface of exchange between the hops and the beer. And then because it's dynamic, we will reach the aroma profile we want to reach in a matter of hours instead of days. So here on this slide, you can actually see on the, the, the blue trend here is, is the concentration of hop aromas uh, over time. And you can see that after six to eight hours, you're already at a very high concentration. If you look at the, the orange um, <clears throat> line here, the orange curve is basically what you would need to, to, to wait uh, for, for your aroma con uh, profile to, to, to reach what you want. Uh, and, and that would take a few days, basically. So, so this first customer was trending this and then the traditional way, it would, he would have to wait for three days to reach his aroma profile. And with the MXD, you would just need to wait for six to eight hours. So after you've reached your aroma profile, the second step is, of course, to remove your hops out of your beer. And then as, as we saw earlier, the issue is that when you have your hops in the tank and you don't homogenize, you have a lot of hop sedimenting and another part that is floating. Now, with the MXD, since you can make it run continuously, and it will ensure that um, the hops are homogeneous in the whole volume. Uh, when you empty your tank and send the beer to the separator, you will keep the MXD running. And that will ensure that the solid content on the separator inlet will also be constant. And that is a good thing for the separator. A separator that is well-sized, of course, will have no issue removing all those hops and yeast um, from the beer. And the pictures here are actually showing the solid load at that customer um, on the inlet of the separator when using um, the IMXD. You can see that there is, of course, a solid load, but the solid load is con constant over time. So from the start to the beginning to the end of, um, of the processing of that tank, there is no more difference between the cone, the middle of the tank, and the end um, of, of the tank. So we don't have this issue of carrying uh, or sending a very highly um, concentrated uh, in terms of solids beer to the separator at the end uh, of the process. It means we don't carry over uh, hops through the separator and then we solve the risk of issues of clogging uh, different types of equipment after the separator. When you remove your hops with a separator, you're also much more efficient uh, in terms of beer losses. So you can see here um, on the left picture, um, the outlets uh, on the separator uh, where all the hops and yeast are coming out. It is quite a 
solid. We actually now start spraying a bit of water in the cyclone so that it's easier to to handle and easier to pump in a in another uh, waste tank. You can also see here how it is pre and post centrifuge. There is quite some solid again homogenized on the on the inlet, but on the outlet there is absolutely nothing. There is no carry over after the separator. And that is what, of course, is important here. And if we if we compare two brands that have been dry hopped uh, with the IMXD um, to with the with the former technique, uh, that brewery was usually using five to seven days with the first brand. Um, they could reduce those seven days into one to one and a half day now of process time, and then they could also reduce their beer losses from 10 to 2% losses. And then the other brand where they were using more hops uh, and had to wait up to almost two weeks, up to 10 days, they reduced that process time to, again, one and a half day. So after one and a half day, they were done with their, with their, um, with their dry hop beer. That is also included, the, including the, the, the introduction of the hop pellets into the beer, but also the removal of the hops, so the centrifugation, centrifugation process. And again, here they had up to fifteen percent uh, losses in uh, in terms of beer loss you know, of product losses, and then they reduced those fifteen percent to two, pro two to three percent product losses, which is quite a, a big reduction. So here we we can see a bit more um, practically how how the system looks like, and what are the requirements. Uh, it is thought to be put in larger beer tanks. It can be put, we say it, it can start in, in, in tanks that are around 150 hectoliters, but that's very much on the low side, and it can go up to 5,000 hectoliters tanks. Hop dosing rates can go up to uh, 15 grams a liter, or it's uh, 1.5 kilos per hectoliter. If you need even higher hop dosages, you can, of course, contact us and we can see what is possible. There are some limitations, though. In order to install this, we need a swing cone and we need some clearance under these tanks. So we need at least one meter of clearance to be able to install um, the system. And then we, we do we do uh, recommend, indeed, as we just saw, to, to remove the hops with the separator. Even though if you don't have a separator and still interested in that system, then you would just have to... to to wait for the sedimentation of, of the hops and then do a, a traditional purge of the hop pellets. To summarize, uh, what the IMXD offers is basically a solution uh, for larger breweries um, to dry hop, to dry hop very large volumes and, and to make sure that we reduce the, the, the process issues uh, related to the disaggregation of the hop pellets and the expansion of the hop pellets in small confined places, but also the removal and then the reduction of, uh, of the product losses. There is a smaller waste stream, there's complete hop removal when we use it with a separator. There is a very fast and efficient uh, aroma and flavor extraction. The product flavor is usually matching um, and then we can do very large batches with, with this technique. Um, addition, additional benefits benefits are, are the same as uh, what our traditional isomix brings in a fermentation tank. Um, because, of course, what the MXD uh, does with the hop pellets is one thing, but can also keep the yeast uh, homogeneous during the whole fermentation process. So it's interesting also for breweries who want to optimize their fermentation processes to have it. Two in two, it's a two-in-one solution, you can say. But that was it for the, the IMXD. I will now uh, leave the space to, to my colleague, uh, Harim. Thank you for your attention. All right. So, hello, uh, everybody. Uh, my name is Harim Guajardo. I am also located in uh, the office in, in Denmark. I work as a global uh, product manager taking care of the solutions for craft brewers uh, mainly, but I'm also uh, the manager for the other dry hopping solution we have. Uh, and uh, we will talk about it uh, now. It's um, what we call ALHO. All right, so let's uh, let's start with the, this uh, system. Uh, yeah, so ALHO, as, 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 as it is, it's a stand-alone uh, module or a skid mountain system. 
The idea of uh, the system is that we should be able to introduce uh, uh, the hop pellets instead of uh, doing that in the fermentation maturation tank. We do it on a smaller tank that is just uh, located in a different uh, place uh, in the brewery, uh, near the tanks, let's say, in the fermentation area. And, um, and uh, we can do it uh, for uh, different capacities. Uh, important to mention that Alhop was developed for um, craft brewers uh, initially. So, so the capacities are different because the idea is that, uh, or normally they have smaller tanks in, in craft uh, uh, breweries, right? So we can uh, handle 50 uh, batches of 50 uh, kilos, 100 and 200 kilos of uh, hop pellets per batch. And we are actually just recently the, um, developed a, a new size that it's uh, good enough for 500 kilograms of um, hops. Same as, as my colleague Denis mentioned, the idea of um, doing this uh, dry hopping uh, as dynamic uh, dry hopping is to, to be able to be more efficient uh, with the times, uh, production times, and get more yield. So instead of waiting two, three days uh, as, as the traditional uh, methods, uh, which is, as, as the, uh, the niche show, just to introduce the hot pellets in the fermentation tank and wait, here we will um, uh, do it dynamically. And we are also talking about uh, reducing uh, the um, dry hopping uh, time to Two hours. It's it's a little bit depending on on the volume of the fermentation tank. Uh, and yeah, one of the main advantages, as, as I already said, it is that we will keep the hops uh, out of the fermentation tanks. Let's have a closer look of uh, one of the main uh, some of the main components of the system. Most important component in in, in our system it is the filter. We have a filter that it's made out of uh, wedge wires. In, uh, after talking to different uh, hop uh, suppliers, we realized that um, the separation that we needed to be sure that we will not introduce hops into the fermentation tanks, it will be around 100 uh, microns. Um, according to the hop suppliers, uh, normally we can have particles of around 200 microns. So we went to 100 microns to be sure that we will not uh, let through uh, the hop uh, particles into the fermentation tanks. Besides the filter, uh, we have the standalone tank, as, as you can see in, in this uh, very schematic uh, diagram. And then we have uh, two pumps, the inlet pump, which is just a centrifugal pump that is connecting to the tank that we want to dry hop. And then we have what we call uh, the, an SRU pump. It's a low uh, pump, positive displacement pump. Uh, this pump will be uh, recirculating um, the hop slurry that we will prepare in this uh, system, right? Um, we have um, four main steps in um, dry hopping. So we talk about hop addition as, as the first step. Then we talk about disaggregation as uh, our second step, which is basically, yeah, put the, the beer and the hops in contact. So, so the hops are, they're not dissolved, but they are basically yeah, forming this uh, slurry. Uh, then we have the extraction uh, process, which is uh, mainly get the aromas and uh, flavors we want from, uh, from the hops. And finally, we have uh, hop removal, uh, which is taking care of the leftovers of, of hops, right? So this is the this is how the system looks a little bit more in detail. Uh, from left to right, we have uh, the product inlet. It is connected to a centrifugal pump. Then we have the recirculation pump. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, this is the positive displacement pump. We have the connection to uh, the source tank. So when we are recirculating, we connect the product inlet to that tank and that tank needs to feed it or uh, it needs to have a second uh, entry point, right? So we can recirculate. We can also see a close up of how the the wedge wire looked in inside the filter. The way we add hops into the tank, it's uh, we do it manually. We have the possibility to uh, just remove a blind connection here and just uh, put this uh, funnel so we can introduce the hops at once at the beginning 
And uh, since we want to keep uh, this um, process free of oxygen all the time, we have a CO2 inlet that will allow us to purge air from the empty tank and uh, after after we introduce the, the hop pellets. Uh, besides adding the hops into the tank, uh, which is uh, has to be done manually, the, the, all the process that I'm uh, and the and the equipment we have it is working automatically. Let's now go to the first step of uh, dry hopping. Right, we have the the hop addition, and we will uh, uh, start from a clean uh, system, clean tank. Uh, this means that it has been uh, CIP, and of course this is also um, uh, working automatically. So we will uh, remove the blind and, and put the funnel in. Uh, before doing that, uh, we will uh, push with CO2. We will, we will fill the tank uh, and the system a couple of times and, and exhaust to remove the oxygen or uh, that is already present in the system. So we do that once. Then we introduce the, the hops we need into the tank, uh, depending on the re recipe you, you have for your uh, dry hop beer. And then uh, we close, we, we take out the funnel, we, we put the blind again, we introduce CO2 again to, to uh, remove what's remaining on the... We now uh, go for the uh, step of disaggregation. What we do here is we start introducing beer from the product inlet uh, with the centrifuge pump. We go through the uh, SRG pump from the bottom of the tank and then what we do is we start lifting the pellets uh, with beer. And as we start doing that, we have the exhaust line open to remove whatever is left of, of this uh, mixture of uh, CO2 and air. So as soon as we start filling the tank, we, we start uh, exhausting what we have there, right? And uh, the tank, we should uh, see this tank as a, as a pipe, let's say. It's, it's, there's no head space the tank will be completely full. The idea is is to do it like this to avoid uh, having a, be a free space for for uh, unwanted uh, oxygen. So we will fill the, the whole system with fresh beer and we will start recirculating using the SRU pump. This process can take, uh, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. We normally say that, but as soon as we introduce the, the beer into the tank, into the ad hoc tank, we can already talk about that the disaggregation started. After we finish doing this uh, recirculation internally, we go to the extraction uh, step. In this uh, step, the idea is to recirculate uh, beer from the tank that we want to uh, dry hop. Okay, in this case, the it's always a little bit about uh, what the brewer wants in terms of uh, aromas and flavors, right? Uh, but we have, uh, as a rule of thumb, more or less, that we would like to recirculate twice as much the volume of the source tank to say that the beer has been dry hopped. So, so to give a very simple example, a fermentation tank of 100 hectoliters, if we recirculate at a rate of 100 hectoliters an hour, we can say that after two hours, the beer is more or less uh, dry hop. Um, as mentioned uh, already, when, whenever we are uh, doing commissioning, uh, times uh, are adjusted uh, on site, depending on, on the results. Uh, it can be a little bit more or it can be even a little bit less. When we do this, then uh, when we're doing the extraction, it's uh, then we keep uh, the, the product inlet open. We also keep the product outlet open at, at all times. and Going uh, through the tank, uh, we, we start recirculating the hop slurry. In the filter, we, we have, as, as mentioned before, uh, the cross uh, flow effect uh, uh, because we will have the centrifuge uh, pump on. And then we will, uh, this is how we will be extracting the aromas and the flavors all the time, introducing this fresh beer from the, from the uh, source tank uh, going through the filter. In um, traditional methods, then, Somebody needs to, to go uh, to the fermentation tank and check if, if the hops are not uh, just floating around or if you don't have a centrifuge or uh, remove these uh, bags with hops from there. 
since we already have the hops uh, outside of the fermentation tank, this is basically already done. We don't have to worry about um, removing the, the hops from from uh, our system. Uh, and I'm talking about the fermentation tanks and the, and the process that it's uh, after that, right? So we keep the hops here and it's only a matter of uh, removing the, the hops uh, via the the drain at the bottom of the tank. After that, uh, something that it's making al uh, uh different from other uh, modules or solutions is that we are actually able to uh, recuperate um, beer afterwards. We have two different steps for, for this uh, concentration step and a diafiltration uh, step that will require uh, the aerated water. But let's first talk uh, about the concentration step. What we do is when, when uh, we stop uh, introducing um, beer from the source tank and we only keep uh, open the, the outlet. Then uh, using the CO2 uh, connection we have, we start uh, pushing uh, from the top or let's say squeezing the hop uh, slurry we have in the tank. This uh, pump uh, has the possibility to work uh, in the other direction because that's that's how we have it in the we have the connections in the panel and the automation and the pump can run both directions so in this case we start um, running the pump in the opposite direction then we we squeeze uh, as I mentioned from the top and then we start uh, recovering beer uh, from this uh, hop slurry this beer it's super concentrated uh, um, hop. Uh, it, it, it contains a lot of uh, of aromas and, and, and flavors in, in this, uh, this uh, beer. So we will do this until we reach about 14, 15% uh, dry solids content in this uh, slurry. This is because more than this, then it's really hard for the, for the pump and the, and, and the system to, to to move around this this slurry, we it, it's quite uh, thick at this point. So then uh, we can basically say here that we have finished with the concentration step. If if in your brewery you have the possibility or you have uh, access to the aerated water, and uh, you don't mind lowering the plateau in your fermentation tank a little bit. You can then introduce uh, some uh, dehydrated water into the into the system to dilute a little bit, let's say, the um, slurry, and then we will basically just repeat the same uh, concentration step as as we had uh, before. Uh, we will start uh, pushing again, and until we reach uh, approximately again 15 percent. Uh, concentration that that's it for the the process of uh, dry hopping in in in, in our al hop um, in this uh, slide I'm showing uh, a little bit in the picture you can see how it um, how it looks the, the hop slurry it's it's as, as I mentioned it is really it's really thick uh, in this this is was a, a test we we had recently actually it was beginning of this year in a brewery in France and uh, after that, the results were that this the concentration in, in this uh, hop slurry was uh, fifty percent uh, rice solids, and we actually have a very very short uh, video to show how how it looks uh, when we are uh, removing it uh, from the from there. So I will uh, let you have a. Look. Yes, as you could uh, see on the video, uh, it is very, very uh, dry and, and, and thick uh, slurry that, that, that we got at the end after concentrating. So just a short uh, summary of uh, the different sizes. As I mentioned, uh, we have four uh, sizes. So we, we name uh, our system uh, by the amount of uh, maximum kilograms of hops we can take in, in each um, batch, right? So we have I'll have 50, 100, 200, and 500, which is for 50, 100, 200, and 500 kilograms. The size of the tank for, for each uh, module, it's, uh, it's basically uh, a relation of one-tenth 
of of the of the um, uh, amount of hops we can have, right? So as you can see, for Alcon 500, the tank size will be 10 hectoliters. So it's it's not uh, really uh, it's, it doesn't take a lot of space in in the brewery. It's, it's a small tank. And uh, the main difference it is uh, uh, related to the number of filters we need in each uh, module, both for uh, Alho 500 and 100, we only need one filter. For Alho 200, we need two filters, so we have enough um, filtration surface. And for Alho 500, we're talking about four uh, filters. These filters are, uh, are not um, something that you need to change uh, Within time, they're not uh, consumable, so it's just uh, stainless steel. So you can keep those uh, filters working without any any problem. And this is just uh, a very quick. It, this slide is just to show uh, we we work together with the BLB in Berlin to to develop this module. And uh, back then, we with the help of one craft brewer in Berlin that uh, let us use uh, their beer for these uh, trials, we. Uh, compare uh, against uh, other uh, known uh, application uh, of um, dry hopping, which is a very popular hop gun. And as you can see in this uh, diagram, uh, it is the results are uh, are, are uh, very similar in terms of uh, what you can expect of this uh, dry hopping. Right? It, this was this was a good result. Right? We were comparing against, against this uh, other uh, competitor and. and yeah, uh, you you can see that um, we have very similar results of, of terms so in terms of flavors and uh, how quality of the beer how it looks. So this was really good. We actually have the full report available from from BLB, and we can just um, share with with the whoever is interested. We can just share it via email afterwards, and you can have a closer look of of uh, all the results. Yeah, finally, just a little bit of uh, uh, references from, from uh, other projects. And uh, we have uh, for different um, type of, uh, uh, in different breweries, let's say, uh, both uh, bigger groups and uh, independent breweries. We also have available rental units that we have been uh, uh, moving around. Uh, last year, we, we, during the second part of the year, we used the rental unit in uh, two different breweries here in Europe. Now we're sending it to USA and we should be able to have this uh, rental unit again back um, uh, during uh, Q3 uh, of this uh, year. Uh, and yes, that is that is it. Uh, so now we go back to, to Mashek and to, to see if we have any questions to, to answer. So please, Mashek. So uh, the first questions, the question, does uh, Alhop also work uh, for um, infusing of other ingredients such as vanilla, cacao, nips, and other uh, pillable ingredients? Yeah, so even though we developed this, the module for uh, hop pellets, we, we have had this request uh, before, actually, this question, and, and we think that we can do it uh, in a simple way, we, we, we should be able to uh, just have uh, something inside the tank where people can just hook uh, a bag with the ingredients such as, as the mentions here, uh, they mentioned here cacao nibs or uh, um, things like this. So I think we can we can make it to work. Uh, but in cases like this, since there's so many ingredients uh, that we can talk about, it's recommended that maybe we can um, we can talk in. We can have individual meetings to talk about the ingredients and how can we accommodate these um, uh, requests. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. thank you, Harim. Uh, the second question: uh, Are there any plans to extend the second solution? It means uh, I'll hope to the bigger volumes, like 300, 500 kgs of uh, hope. Yes, it is. It is. Uh, it is like that. Uh, um, we have now uh, the, the biggest one we have is 200, but we are actually I, I, I mentioned we have developed one for 500 kilos, and that's um, actually we already have the design, and we already have a couple of customers aligned uh, that that they're looking at this um, solution with the 500 kilos. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, the next question, uh, actually, it is not uh, specifically uh, described uh, to the which uh, equipment is related, but the question is, have there, uh, there also been uh, any trials with more concentrated uh, hop pallets such as T45, uh, Lupamax, Creo, etc.? <clears throat> if it's related to the IMXD, uh, that should not be a big issue. If it's related to the Alrop, we know a customer in Germany uses a blend of T90, T45 uh, without issue. I think up to 30% uh, T45 and then 70% T90. And he, has, uh, he was successful with that. We tried with Cryo, uh, much higher content. And here, uh, the dry hopping was successful as well. With the Alrop, I mean here, huh? Um, but then the concentration step was more complicated because uh, these uh, products are very sticky and most probably reduces the filtrability, even though the ALHOP is based on, uh, on cross-flow that prevents uh, clogging. Uh, here the flows were quite low. But for the customer, it was not, uh, let's say, showstopper because we could maybe accommodate less or maybe fill up the, the system to the max and then the beer losses would still be quite uh, very acceptable compared to traditional dry hopping uh, solutions. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question is related to the investment. Uh, so what is the more or less investment cost of all hops? Depending, of course, on the, on the size and uh, if it's the alpha 50 or 500, it is also a little bit depending um, on some optionals that we have available. So maybe just to give a super rough estimation, uh, 170,000 for an alpha 100, as an example, uh, fully automated uh, as, as shown in the modules. All right. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question, uh, actually, I'm not uh, crystal clear what is uh, the, but the question is, uh, example in the system of parallel alhop vessel in one skid. So uh, uh, I can see that it was maybe related to a previous question, parallel alhop vessels in one skid, and it was, are there any plans to extend the second solution uh, to bigger volume. So yes, uh, we don't need to put two systems, two smaller systems in parallel. We we have bigger systems uh, up to 500 kilos. If only 300 kilos are required, we can also do something about that. But you, it is not necessary to put two small ones in parallel, um, even though it could bring uh, actually some flexibility as well. How does the uh, purging the tank uh, in AHOP work? Is it automatic or does it need manual hopping uh, up and pump, uh, purging? As, as, uh, as it is now, uh, we, and we're talking about after concentration step, as, as you saw in the video, what we did it was just we connected a hose uh, and we were pushing with CO2 uh, from the top uh, and then we were going into this uh, IBC container. So it's, it's, uh, it can easily done uh, like can be done like that. But for the bigger system we have developed, we actually included an option with an extra lob uh, pump with an SRU to act automatically remove uh, the, the hops from, from the bottom of the tank. So that option is actually available uh, as well now. Do we understand uh, correctly? The losses uh, for traditional dry hoping covered both cold trap and hope while for isomix, the cold trap loss was excluded. If so, what would be the actual difference? Yeah, so, so if we strictly look at, look at the numbers um, <clears throat> that were related to the IMXD, you can say it was, it was uh, it's, it's for the whole thing. So they, they, they look at basically what is the final volume uh, of the beer that has been dry hopped. And that's how they counted their their beer losses. So how much did they start with uh, before dry hopping? Uh, let's say they have, a, yeah, they have a, a certain amount of hectoliters in their tank. And then how much final beer do they have after filtration? This is how they looked at their, uh, 
beer losses and calculated the percentage losses. And then after switching to to uh, to MXD, basically, essentially, what happened is that they they started homogenizing and then uh, take all the solids out yeast and uh, of the remaining yeast, of course, because this is a uh, dry hopping during the maturation phase so most of the yeast already has been taken away uh, but then all the hops were actually taken out via the separator and then there is a massive reduction in beer losses but again the same way uh, the, the, the losses were calculated the same way what is the starting volume before dry hopping and what is the final beer uh, after the filter and that's how it was uh, being compared so I, I hope this answers your que question um, um, or in other words, we did not remove the yeast before using uh, uh, or leave the yeast uh, uh, when we were not using the IMXD and then we will remove both of them at the same time and then change the process when using the IMXD. So the, the, most of the yeast was taken away before. So it's very much comparable. You know, beer losses are, are very high uh, in terms of when, when we do dry hopping and we don't remove the hops. Uh, via separation or if we don't use an alcohol because it soaks up, soaks up so much beer. But as soon as we use a separator or we can concentrate the slurry with an alcohol, then of course uh, the beer losses are decreasing drastically. It's not much about the cold trap or the yeast and so on. Okay, uh, we have next question. Uh, does the uh, EMXD system not uh, counteract uh, the uh, colloidal uh, stabilization by moving up the cold trap, so the trap removal before filtration would be less efficient. Denis? We haven't seen a, <clears throat> we haven't we haven't seen a, an issue at our customers uh, in terms of uh, haze, let's say after the filter. On the contrary, actually, the filter runs filtration runs usually were better because there was no carryover of hops uh, in the filter, which was much more uh, detrimental uh, to the runs, at least. Now, when we talk about colloidal stability on a very long term, um, I must say I don't know if it's related to moving the, the homogenization. Now, there is something uh, that is known as well. As soon as you dry hop, you reintroduce polyphenols from your hops. And normally, we, we are all know we put the hops in the brew house, and then we, we introduce polyphenols from the hops uh, in the world during the boiling. Those polyphenols will react with the proteins, of course, and we will create a hot trap. When we do dry hopping, we, re we reintroduce polyphenols, actually in large dose, because the amount of hop, uh, hops we use during dry hopping is much higher than what we put in, in the brew house, at least uh, for heavily dry hopped uh, beers. It means that the free proteins in the beer will react uh, with those newly introduced polyphenols. So it will increase the, the haze. We have I had customers, for example, that used to do dry hopping in BBTs, uh, very traditionally in bags. So yield was quite very low, no mixing. Um, and it was somehow not much affecting their brightness. Um, but as soon as they tried a dynamic dry hopping system, meaning basically enhancing the extraction, um, of of uh, of the aromas and also uh, through that uh, the polyphenols of those uh, of those hot pellets immediately after a few hours you will see a haze forming again. So they had to 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 refilter the beer, and that is most probably why you actually it is very much recommended always to dry hop before filtration. It's actually not a very good idea to dry hop in BBTs. It's the only time we heard that someone did that, and they realized also their mistake. And I, I believe they have changed their plans. So in terms of colloidal stability, you have to, to take that into consideration. It's not only about moving, um, whether it's IMXD, whether it's ALHOP, whether it's any other technology that will trigger a movement or accelerate the dry hopping because there is a movement, there is a mixing. It's about the fact that you will reintroduce those polyphenols that will react with the existing proteins in the beer and then might increase the haze. But normally, if you have a filter that is working properly, that should not be an issue. Especially if you have a separator, if it's a crossflow filter, it should not be a problem. If it's a, if it's a, how do you call it, a Kieselgo filter, it should not be a big issue either. 
I hope that answers. Okay, uh, we have one more question. Uh, can you <clears throat> also deliver an automatic dosing system for hope pallets to reduce the manual work? Actually, we we for this one for this Alpha Five Hundred, we we um, uh, designed we included a screw conveyor that um, that can be considered uh, as as one of the options for the. For the module because it is quite a lot of uh, kilograms of hops, right? So it is um, convenient to have uh, something to make it easier. Uh, still, somebody needs to put the hops into the actual conveyor, uh, but then the conveyor will do the heavy lifting, let's say. Um, so we have that uh, as an option as well, uh, available now for the big um, system. Thank you. So, uh, conscious of uh, time limits, we close uh, with this answer. Thank you all for your attention and fruitful Q&A session. Now, uh, now warping up, uh, as mentioned at the beginning of our meeting, please stay tuned as you will have opportunity to meet with uh, us again on the next webinar. So thank you for all participants, for our uh, dear uh, presenters. Stay tuned. Bye.